Hello, everybody. Welcome to a brand new Let's Play series. Today, we're going to play Hearthstone for Kaiser. We're going to be playing as the Grand Old Nation of Paraguay here. So, Paraguay, it's been referred to, like, I'm pretty sure. You know, ask, ask a historian. I'm pretty sure it's been referred to in the past as the Prussia of South America. And you know what? Today, we're going to be living up to that legacy, or at least we're going to try to. So, we're going to go for our first um, military focus here. And after playing so much Millennium Dawn, I'm excited to get back into a mod that runs, like, slightly okay. Not that Kaiserreich, of course, runs great, especially in comparison to, say, Vanilla. There's a lot more stuff going on. One military factory here. Army Navy experience. Don't worry about these stuff. Okay. I'm ready to go. But, like, Millennium Dawn, it runs so poorly. And then Kaiserreich, it runs poorly compared to Vanilla. But it runs much better than Millennium Dawn is, so I'm excited to get back into this. The Republic of Paraguay. After a devastating war of the Triple Alliance, Paraguay was shattered and broken almost beyond recognition. The vast majority of its male population, dead or orphaned, the extreme demographic and economic damage is not all, however, as well as Brazil and Argentina's exclusive land off of the Guarani Republic. They effectively only kept their sovereignty as a buffer state between the two nations. Rebuilding and recovering from the disaster was no easy feat. A political instability still corroded the nation. In 1904, the liberal revolution against the rule of the Corrados broke out, the liberal rule started a period of great political instability, which culminated in the Civil War in 1922 between the rival factions. Then, in, in late 1929, war again came to Paraguay by the head of, hand of Bolivia. That nation, under economic pressure to secure the rumored overwhelms of the Chaco region, aggressively started to assert its claims in the disputed area. The Chaco War took only four gruesome years, or took four gruesome years, and by 1933, Paraguay had completely uh, routed the Bolivian forces and was starting to occupy their lands. Total victory did not come uh, without a cost, however, as mounting doubt and military expenses combined uh, to be the burden on the government. The Bolivian military was poorly equipped and poorly trained to fight in the region, and its low morale meant that Paraguay and casualties were far smaller. The political situation did not prove it, however, and the liberal rule was faltering. Rafael Franco and other radical leaders launched a coup in 1934 based on uh, less authoritarian principles, but were deposed after a short three-month rule by the Chaco war hero Jose Felix Estigarbia. Look, I don't, I don't speak Spanish, okay? <laughs> Now, uh, the age uh, against the syndicalist Franco and Bolivian invaders greatly influenced politics, as he is now almost unanimously acclaimed as the nation's savior and hero. The rise of Argentinian uh, patriotic lead, as Guardia and his cabinet are again on high alert, as Manuel Carles did little to hide his expansionist goals in his speech uh, upon ascending into leadership. War may soon again fall upon Paraguay. We could actually, you know, I'm going to save. I'm not going to actually change the difficulty settings. We're going to go into just, we're just gonna do this straight up and if we end up losing so badly that's embarrassing then we will uh then we'll, then we'll think about it okay so default by medium dear player welcome this event allows you to change difficulty your paraguay campaign please note regards to like the outcome the place requires planning careful execution micromanagement of your army you'll face stronger enemies with very limited resources good luck the heroes of the shock of war will be watching you is this the first time i've ever seen in guys rank a difficulty setting what does it actually do you just get 2,000 equipment. Easy difficulty removes most of the custom unit spawns and AI tweaks. Medium difficulty contains most of the new tweaks and improvements. Prepare to see stronger enemies. Chile's behavior has changed as well. It will, no, it will not tolerate your aggression against Patagonia should you attack it. Okay, so we're, we're just going to go medium. We're not, we're not going to worry about hard. I'm guessing we have no guns. Absolutely not. Like, don't be a fool. So, we have a bunch of uh, disputed regions right now. We have uh, Chaco Astral. We have this region over here. We've got, I think, maybe a claim against Bolivia. I think this is also a claim we can maybe get as well. We got, we got a lot of uh, claim territory. Now, in terms of what route we're going to be taking, my gut... I mean, I don't actually... Which which what way do we want to go? I was thinking, like, Paraguay and Union State, Paraguay first. We're returning democracy. No matter what, we get these stability, party popularity modifiers... What are we right now? Right now we're authoritarian democratic. I'm kind of leaning leaning towards the military's revolt. Followed by probably going national populist. Weed out traitors. Seize total control. Control the military. We can't get this uh, because we need to go uh, socialist. But we control the military. We do uh, massive propaganda campaigns. For the army. I mean basically I want the army to be strong. Right? If we're going to be going... Uh, we're going to be fighting much stronger enemies. We need to be powerful. And we're also going to be fighting Bolivia and Argentina at the same time. It's scary, for sure. Are any of you... Are you guys actually any 
good. Cavalry divisions, militia is kind of garbage. But I'm honestly, I'm going to take the militia. Even though they're not good, 10 combat width is not fantastic. We don't... We don't have troops that get us in the entire border. So like, having troops on the entire border uh, with at least one Argentina or Bolivia, I would I would be happy with. We'll have to kind of kind of align ourselves with Chile and Patagonia at least a little bit initially, so we can take over uh, these regions of Argentina. I, I don't think we'll lose. I say that I'm. We could lose. Actually, what are our national focuses right now? Military influence. We get massive uh, division, bit, massive recruit population. Factory output is awful. Military pension, 10%, and then you actually just cancel each other out. Okay, so this, this, this adds up to zero. That's fine. Uh, I'm assuming we are making guns. We're making literally 10 of them a day. Black Monday. Now, I don't know how bad Black Monday is for Paraguay. When I was looking, uh, looking through the street, I did see in the corner uh, a Peter. There, there's a Black Monday focus. So we are going to get hit by it somewhat. What does that actually say? Militarist Revolt. Uh, as Picaria, the man believed to be here of the nation, has betrayed us. Now it's time for us to build a new and better Paraguay. And what do you want? There, democracy is... So something's going to happen. Democracy survives the recovery from Black Monday. The military coup was successful. Okay. I'm guessing we need to self-sufficiency or slash the budget. My gut is not totalist, is not national populist. I'm assuming that means we got to slash the budget in order to have a militarist revolt. Because that's, that's at least this is what it, it seems like is the case. Because we're not totalist, not national populist. Those are the two militarist factions. So we're going to slash the budget once, once you're finished. Paraguay, despite being landlocked nations, connected to the wider global economy via port in Asian and Rio de la Plata. The stock uh, market crash news arrived first to us as a curiosity, but the effects were soon felt. Foreigners cannot buy our products, and we're having immense difficulties in importing vital goods into our nation. Worse still, the budgetary situation has entirely collapsed, and our entire military personnel are already up in arms. Ready to defend their rights should we encroach on them in any way? Truly bad times are ahead. Paraguay may very well have to live in commercial isolation. Well, how bad is Black Monday? That, that's... That's not a great one. That's a that's a pretty bad Black Monday. Okay, so we have snap elections. Stat okay, so first first thing first, status of our army after the Chaco War. Our victory in the Chaco War came with a heavy price. We took on many casualties and left our country bleeding. Our troops were constantly under-equipped and under-supplied. We were able to win only because of the fierce determination of our troops and because of our generals exce uh, uh, exceeded in uh, leading them. However, many casualties could be avoided. We need to reform if we want to avoid continuing on this path and suffer such a catastrophic war uh, as the terrible Triple Alliance again. So, I believe, I mean, this specifically mentions the military commander. So I think we need to, we need to do this. I, I'm pretty sure. Adding to the economic crisis, the political crisis developed. The position of the Liberal Party, which supports uh, Escobar's regime, has weakened, and the situation uh, becomes more and more difficult to manage against the opposition. The Conservative Colorado Party has pushed for a while to hold an election to oust uh, Escobar out of office. Today, the president announced that their wish was finally granted, and a snap election will uh, indeed be organized with the instability. Uh, with the instability, Paraguayan citizens will be asked to choose between the, uh, the security of Escobar's liberals and the fresh influence of the Conservative Colorados. Nothing is assured, and the ballots decrees that the winner is... Well, we, I think we want the Liberals, who are currently, uh... I guess, are the Liberals PNL? Oh, okay, so yeah, it's the same uh, party, okay. So I believe we want you. Fantastic. Market Liberals are in the coalition. And after this, we want to go for a new challenge. We're going to have to slash the budgets because I want the military to basically be as mad at me as humanly possible. Okay, we're going to slash the budgets. And presumably, at some point here, I'm guessing we want to cut veteran, veteran pensions. Like, that that's kind of our main. Slash the budget and then immediately cut veteran pensions. Sounds like a... A great recipe, if you ask me. Okay, 
death. We got a lot of stuff going on. Again, like, really, what happens in the wider world? I, I, I don't think we care about too much. Please do not turn on night and day. I should actually just disable that shortcut kind of if I can figure out how to. Because we're not really going to get involved in the second Ville Creek too much. Our, our main focus is going to be in South America. Pensioners protest. Pensioners and other pensioners have protested in very large numbers after the announcement of delays in their payments. Usually, such protests would have been quickly over, but now the payment delays also extend to low-ranking officers and soldiers who are nominally in charge of dealing with such rabble, and now refuse to intervene. Both local soldiers and veterans united in protest. There isn't much left to do about it other than to wait it out. Look, th things in Paraguay are going swimmingly. They're going great. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. Oh, actually, we just get a choice down here. Oh, okay, so actually, we just... We just choose one of these okay so I'm, I'm, I'm assuming if we do self-sufficiency history or debt democracy has been saved and you need you which needs this which needs this yes so you I guess you can't Maybe if you just do self-sufficiency, democracy is considered saved by default. Oh, no, I guess you do, actually. This probably unlocks the democracy tree. But, of course, we're slashing the budget. We'll also go early mobilization. Thank you very much. I mean, I'll never say no. Actually, I probably should have taken a political advisor thinking about it. But, actually, no, thinking about it again. Think thinking about it on the, on the flip side of the flip side. We are going to be going to war, so war economy or... Whatever, whatever mobilization we're on is still good. Rafael Franco in exile. Ever since he was ousted from the government due to his radical syndicalist ideas, Rafael Franco further delved into left-wing rhetoric in exile in Chile. Now styling himself as a uh, solonist totalist, he clamors for revolution in Paraguay from his exile. Uh, for years, a uh, few paid him any heel, uh, just one of those many deposed despots in the world. But now, with our resistance threatened, he directly calls for a coup that will allow his return. And the worst part is, he actually finds some of those who are willing to listen. Again, we want the LDI. We want we want the whatever the party was called. What what, what are they called? Protection of the Paraguay. We want the military to revolt. We want the military to be as strong as possible. But I believe the war in Argentina, I think, breaks out in early 37. March 37, and then they go down this focus stream. So we have about a year. Give or take. Also, are you 49, 49? We need both of you. And then you, I think, get bypassed automatically. Top military incentives. What could possibly go wrong? Let's do national liberalism. That's going to give us 10% more political power. So we do have harsh budget cuts. People are not happy with the government. Okay? They, they, they could have been... We, we could have dealt with this a little bit better. Like, self-sufficiency, I think, it's like the slower but better approach. Yeah, because you just lead to a coup. I mean, th theoretically, I guess democracy could be saved, but we're not, we're not doing that. If we wanted to save democracy, we would just go down the sensible path. But fuck that shit, man. Also, I think Peru and Bolivia, can you guys go to war? I, I You think I would know this. I mean, the worst thing actually would be for, would be for Peru, uh, Peru and Bolivia to unify. That that would actually be like a death sentence. Military payment issues. A budgetary issue is particularly resulted in the reduction of pay of several military officers, especially those among lower ranks. The situation affects morale, leading to desertion, resignation, and small protests in the army. Whatever we do, and even after we ask for their understanding, considering the situation, the dissatisfaction continues to get worse. Okay, we lost a thousand troops. Not nah, not the end of the world. We we can recover from this. Hey, we were just going to throw a thousand troops to die in the in the mountains of Bolivia anyway, so either way, I think we're, we're pretty good. Anti-LPA rally. LPA is... I don't know. Oh, it, it, it's uh, Argentina. Okay. Argentina's new president, Emmanuel Carles, is relentless in his smear campaign against Paraguay and other countries he deems enemy of the Argentinian state. Today in Asion, hundreds of people gathered to protest his insults and his rhetoric, demanding an official diplomatic break between our nations. 
While this is unlikely to happen, such a danger is politically good for the army, as the threat of war is a reminder of Husei Paraguay a few short years ago. Okay. 10 political power, 2% war support. Like, do you even claim, like, does Paraguay even, or not Paraguay, does Argentina even claim any of our territory? Like, not really. I mean, Peru wants both of these territories. We, like, we need more units. Increase mining yield, please. One civilian factory? Won't say no to that. And what do you do? You just basically make things worse. Ooh, an imperial coup. Okay. Which is paternal autocrats? Oh, wait, no. It's actually the uh, conservatives. Okay. Or wait, no. Wait, no. Or is it the Qing? Somebody had a coup. I, I don't... I didn't actually read the event. I thought it was uh, Japan, but actually it might have been China. Do you have a good defense general? No, you're all basically the same. So I'm going to slap you on the border with Bolivia for now. I guess we go up to like two on this. Like we just need a lot of... Not good units. We just need a lot of cheap units. Austin Barrios tours America. Austin Pollo Boros, as a famous Paraguayan guitarist, was able to achieve one of his dreams. That, to be touring America. With the first performance being uh, held in San Juan on the island of Puerto Rico. During his tour, he was able to play the famous song Every Man a King with Senator Huey Long himself when he toured the beautiful state of Louisiana in Bouton Rouge. Uh, like most Paraguayans, Barrios admires Long for his stand against, uh, against Bolivian aggression in the Chaco War. In this occasion, the Paraguayan ambassador who was escorting uh, Mr. Barrios uh, during the tour expressed his best wishes to Governor Long in regards to his presidential campaign, hoping that he will come out on top as the 31st President of the United States of America. Yeah, like, Paraguay really, really loves Huey Long. I'm pretty sure we actually get an event if, um, if Huey Long loses the war in, uh, in the U.S. Then he actually flees to Paraguay. So, I mean, if he flees, I'll, I will take him in. I, I have no reason not to. Okay, give me a research bonus next. I really wish he had more than two research slots, but... I mean, beggars can't be choosers, right? Also, do we have anything good in here? Okay, but if we're not socialists, we can have you. I mean, even then, you're like you're not like that great. Multi population. You're basically all just military commanders, which I guess actually is not surprising, given our uh, position uh, in Paraguay. Okay, you not falls in a civil war. Who 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 cares? Who asked? Do we have, do anybody good in here? I mean, max entrenchment plus... What's, what's better, max entrenchment or just 10% more defense? Because right now, your entrenchment is 10%. Base maximum 5, base gain 1. It receives a 10% defensive combat bonus. Your defense right now is 100. So it'd be... S I actually don't know if max entrenchment is better. It might be, it might be worse. Trench 10%. You think I would know this? Like, I, I, I know it's it's silly. You think I would know this stuff? Do we have, like, an infantry expert? We do. Thing is, you don't passively generate military experience. Max entrenchment plus 6. Defense plus 10. So that would be... You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna Google it. I'll be, I'll be right back. That's the mute button. I, I don't remember what my pause button is. You know what? I'll look it up between episodes. There we go. Okay. We got a war in uh, East Asia. We got the Olympics in Dublin. Fantastic. I don't think we won anything, but, you know. I, I, I can't imagine Paraguay has too many professional athletes. I, I would be stunned, basically. We're already on extended conscription. We could go up to partial mobilization right away as well. And I think we just want to do it. I mean, I, I mean, I mean, there's a, the advisors as well. 
Factory output going up would be nice. Throw more units here. We could max entrapment plus 30%. We could like double down on defensiveness. You've already got aggressive assault, which is 10% more breakthrough. Yeah, I guess give me defensive doctrine. Being the little nation of Paraguay, we're, we're going to be flanked on, on all sides, essentially. Okay, we're former soldier. You just passively gain army experience. You're actually not 0.03 versus point. Yeah, so you're actually ass. Population, times you're also garbage. Not great. You you know what? You're you're pretty decent. Political power gain factory output. So you're good. I would probably take you. Probably one, two, and then three. I guess I'd take probably these three. Max planning is kind of okay, but I guess I'll just go with the political power gain guy. I, I know he's not, like, the most exciting choice. Also, I need to choose a national focus. Let's go for expert focus economy. And I think that at least right now, this is going to be a great time for us to end off our very first episode here. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, give a thumbs up. If you not enjoyed, throw a thumbs down. If you want to see more, subscribe and goodbye.